one thing that we really want to get across to people is sometimes, you know, conflict gets to a point where you're having difficulty resolving it on your own. And, you know, I can say, you know, 30 years ago when we first got married, if somebody had said, hey, you need to go to counseling or it would be beneficial to you to go to counseling, maybe get a third party to help resolve this issue, uh, I would probably have really pushed back against that. I would have seen it as weakness. I would have seen it as somebody else getting in my business. You know, I don't need that. Uh, but over the years, as I have seen other people uh, go to counseling, and as we ourselves have gone to counseling, you know, I would just dare say most people that, that know us uh, and, and know about our marriage would probably be surprised to know that we have gone to counseling. And why did we do that? Well, you know, marriages get in a rut, yeah. right? We get in a, in a groove, and, and sometimes we're not in the same groove. I'm in mine, and, and you're in yours, and we're just having trouble coming to, to, to a, a point where we can find agreement right. and find common ground. You know, when we went to counseling, uh, we did not, uh, it was not like we were on the verge of divorce no. uh, or anything like that. We had just reached uh, a point with some issues where we felt like it would be beneficial, and indeed it was, it was. very, very beneficial. Maybe you got something to add to that. Yes. Um, the reason for our going to counseling was largely because, and it, it may be this way for others too, you may have um, a life event or a circumstance come into your life that brings great stress or that brings a new set of, of circumstances or your life has a major change. In our case, I was dealing with some um, emotional, I had had some very low emotional times. And I have been very candid with most of the listeners and in my writing over the years that I've suffered from depression on and off for years. Well, this was a bit uh, long. This particular emotional low was a long one and it was impacting our marriage. And so we decided that, you know, my problems, the problems, if you will, seem really big to me. And we needed someone to help guide us a bit as to how to work through some of those issues. And so we sought out a Christian counselor and it was very beneficial for us. Some of the benefits, um, you can speak to the ones you observe, but we had a couple of moments where, what some people might call an aha moment, a light bulb moment, when you realize something pretty significant about, about your past or about your relationship that really opened up a door. It was like a new vista and you just had a new understanding about the way you are. And um, we had a couple of those moments where we really found some new truths about ourselves. And, and, and let me just interject there. You would think after years <laughs> of marriage, right? You would think there's nothing I don't know. Uh, but we did have those moments and we're like, you know how could we have, we have been never how could before? we have been married for years and not see this and you know one of those things had to do with uh, the I'll call it the baggage we brought into marriage uh, but just our life circumstances that we brought into marriage that we had kind of missed and, and overlooked and and it was causing us to uh, not understand how to relate to one mm -hmm. another in the right way and I think it's you know in counseling, you know, one thing that they do is help you understand what each individual person has brought into the relationship, right? And I think it's, it is helpful in marriage for us to understand that, right? Mm -hmm. You had a set of life circumstances you brought into marriage. I had a set of right. life circumstances. We got to get take those two completely different paths now, put them together, and make that work. Right. And the more we know about what our thinking was before we got married and, and how our family life was, what the family expectations were, you know, all those different things. Uh, the better we understand those, the better we know how to make it work together. Yes, absolutely. And two, I would say that, you know, there, like you said, there seems to be a bit of a stigma attached to counseling. 
like um, you're needy? Well, I've got news for everyone. We're all needy. And to me, going to counseling is really a sign of strength. It's a sign of I want to work this out. I want to get this better. I want to make our relationship stronger than ever. What I worry about is when people are unwilling to go to counseling because what that says to me is I'm in this square and I see it this way and I'm not moving. Okay. All of us need wisdom from others. All of us need counsel. And a lot of times that third person who's not your mother, who's not your brother or your best friend or your Facebook friend, but yeah, that third fa Facebook, person... <laughs> Facebook is not the place to go to camp for counseling. Let me just say that please, right please out. Don't, right please out don't try channel. to air your problems there. I don't, I don't recommend it. But if you go to that person who is brand new to what, what it is you're facing, they will have a fresh perspective for you. And, you know, counselors are trained to help guide you back onto a positive positive course because one of the things that I learned about personally was what my counselor called um, what kind of thinking it just left me um, <laughs> distorted, distorted thinking. distorted thinking distorted thinking that kind of goes back to that filling in this story of oh this and this and I just start coloring this scenario in my mind that perhaps is not even true mm -hmm. and so the counselor helped me recognize when I'm starting to do that and it's very helpful for me to, you know, it's helping me in relationships to realize I don't need to think that way. That's hurting me. And so um, I just am really a fan of counseling because I've seen so many hurting people over the years that really needed to talk to someone but refused. And well, it, go ahead. Well, we tend to put ourselves on an island. On right? an island. And, you know, it was pretty obvious to me in our times when we've gone to counseling is that we thought maybe our struggles were unique to us, but there's a common thread that was running right. through them. You know, the counselor has seen the same issues that we were struggling with. He has seen many, many times before. hundred times over, all right, yes. And could tell us, hey, uh, you ought to try this. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, quite honestly, one of the things that our counselor did was just simply say, you know, I would say something and he would say, well, John, how do you feel about that? Right? And and he drew us into communicating at a deeper level, yes. you know, kind of yes. that uh, that level of feelings that we were discussing earlier. And, and so it just would encourage people, don't put yourself, don't isolate yourself. You know, let that light come in. Let that third party come in and help somebody else resolve your issues because you got years ahead of you where the fruit of this is going to be born. And I'm going to tell you, dealing with those issues makes your life so much better down the road. It brings so much more peace, contentment, fulfillment to your life when you do that. Another thing I'd like to say about counseling, and I say this very much with love in my heart. If you are a person that people have recommended that you need counseling. If more than one person has said that to you, you really need to consider what they're saying. And the reason is nobody has got all the answers and has everything right. And we are foolish if we are telling ourselves that. We need the wisdom of others. And if you have people in your life that are referring you to counseling or that are encouraging you to go, you need to take that very seriously and consider what they're saying. That, you know, someone from a different angle, you know, we're in here and we've got more than one camera going because it's looking at us from different angles. People of other angles can see things that are blind spots to you. And so, I hope you will take that to heart because that is from someone, this is coming from someone who has done a lot of hurting and a lot of dealing with this, trying to deal with this stuff on my own. And I am a much better person today because I did go. And so I just hope that will encourage you. Yeah, and just not to belabor the counseling issue too much, but just a couple other things. 
you know, I think are important. What are the barriers to going to counseling? You know, I think first and foremost, there's this embarrassment or yes. pride issue that we just need to set to the side. Well, I had it. Right? I, I had it to start with. I felt yeah, it. I, I did too. I, I, I will readily admit that. And it's one of the reasons that we're talking about it here is hopefully somebody will hear this and say, Scott and John went to counseling? Uh, well, and they're actually admitting it, you know, and they found it helpful. Maybe that will encourage somebody. I hope so. Maybe that will encourage somebody else. I know for me, that's really what caused me to be willing to go. Is I had other people in my life that I was close to, who had marital struggles, and and they went to counseling, and they told me the benefits of it, and they were open and honest about it, and and they didn't hide the fact that they had been. You know, one thing I have learned in my. Uh, I've got a mentorship group that I meet with once a, once a month. You know, one thing that's obvious in there, because we're very honest in that group, is marriage is difficult. It's hard work. A lot of people struggle. And, you know, marriage is a cycle. You know, you can hit some highs, and then you can hit some lows. Uh, you know, that's the way ours has been. Uh, and in those low points is when you might need to go, go talk to someone, right? right. And uh, so, anyway... The barriers, the first, first of all, set the, the embarrassment of it aside. The financial aspect of it. Yeah, you're going to have to pay a counselor. It's an investment yes. in your marriage. There is no better money that can be spent than investing in your relationship. Right. You know, uh, I see so many people today that are focused on career. They're focused on material things they're they're focused on accumulation of stuff and you know I, I will admit i've been there myself but here's what i've learned over 30 years there is zero in this world that brings you more joy more contentment more happiness more fulfillment than this relationship right here and then with with kids added on to that uh, I mean, that's where it's at. That's what our priority in life should be. Yeah. And so if we're going to spend some, if, if you need, if you're worried about the money, look at it as an investment, yes. right? Uh, there's no better investment. That also goes with, this is not counseling specific, but we'll get to this in a minute, but spend time, uh, spend some money on developing your relationship. Yes. Take a trip, take a weekend away. Is it going to cost you something? Yes, but it's an investment that will produce returns um you know the other the other barrier to counseling may just be time mm -hmm. right but most counselors uh have some extended evening yes, hours they because they recognize people have jobs and they work they need to make themselves available uh, but even if you have to shift your work schedule or work some extra time or use some vacation time on it right make it a priority yes. uh, whatever you know maybe there's a barrier to you that i haven't named but Find a way to work around that, mm -hmm. work through that barrier if you're at a point where, where counseling would be, we, would be right. helpful.